Intermolecular forces are really helpful for us to be able to predict either boiling points or melting points because when we provide enough energy to a system, we can overcome those attractive forces to have different phase changes. So going from solid to liquid, which is our melting, or from liquid to gas, which is our boiling point. So the first sort of one we're going to look at is we can use London forces uh, alone to predict boiling points if we're looking at different non-polar molecules. And the rule goes that um, if you have stronger London forces, um, you will have a higher boiling point because more energy is required to overcome the attraction uh, between the molecules and separate them. So if you recall from our previous video, um, looking at which molecule has the higher London forces here, we're looking for the one with the most electrons, the most surface area, as well as the biggest sort of volume of electron cloud. So if we consider CH4, C2H6, C3H8, or C4H10, C4H10 is going to tick all of those boxes and have the highest boiling point out of all of these series. Now, another thing to kind of keep in mind is that dipole-dipole forces, because they are based on permanent dipoles over temporary dipoles, which are London forces, so these are temporary, dipole-dipole uh, forces are stronger than London forces. So if you have a molecule that is polar, and contains dipole-dipole forces, it will have a higher boiling point than something that is non-polar that has just uh, London forces alone. So let's take a look at this example. Which of the following will have a higher boiling point? Well, if we take Br2 and look at sort of its structure, there's no dipole here, okay? Because they're both the same element. Whereas if we looked at ICL, because they're two different elements, we do have a permanent dipole here, okay? And it's pointing towards the chlorine. So that means that Br2 is nonpolar, right? Because there's no dipole. Whereas ICL is a polar molecule. So Br2 has London forces only, whereas ICL has both London and dipole dipole. I'm just going to write DD for short. So ICL would have the higher boiling point. All right, taking a look then at another example, Br2 versus F2. Both of these molecules are nonpolar. They both do not have a dipole because they are both the same element bonded to each other. Now, if you look at in terms of the number of electrons, each fluorine has nine electrons. So that's 18 electrons total for that molecule. Whereas Br2 has 35 electrons for each bromine. So 70 electrons total. Because there are only London forces here, because they are nonpolar, Br2 is going to have the higher boiling point because it has more electrons. Okay, one more example, uh, CO2 versus CH3I. This now becomes important that we draw out first the Lewis structures and the shapes, the Vesper shapes. So we know carbon dioxide is linear. Uh, we look at its bond dipoles, so they're both pointing towards oxygen, but overall this molecule is nonpolar. So that means it only has London forces. If we look at CH3I, this one has a tetrahedral shape. And this one is definitely polar because we have uh, the carbon iodine bond. So it's pointing towards the iodine. And they're very small, but still kind of relevant dipoles pointing towards the carbon on the three carbon hydrogen bonds. 
Regardless, overall, there will be a dipole pointing uh, towards the iodine end of this molecule. It is polar, and so it's going to have both London and dipole-dipole forces, which means that it will have the higher boiling point. Now, another thing we need to keep in mind is that hydrogen bonding is a special type of dipole-dipole force, but it is also stronger than dipole-dipole forces. Um, there's many reasons why. We're not going to go into the reasons why in this video. You just need to know hydrogen bonding is stronger than dipole-dipole forces. So if hydrogen bonding is present, it will have a higher boiling point than a molecule that does not contain hydrogen bonding. So we need to take a look and look at um, the molecules and consider, can we have hydrogen bonds? Now, if you remember, fluorine has lone pairs of electrons and the hydrogen is bonded to the fluorine. So we have this permanent dipole here and we have it in both molecules. So both of these are, are dipole-dipole forces. They're both polar, but HF fits our definition of hydrogen bonding. So that means that HF is going to have a higher boiling point than HCl because hydrogen bonding is present. All right, one more example, NH3 and PH3. These are actually favorite molecules that, uh, that you will often see in IB exams. And uh, NH3 has and PH3 both have the same structure. They are both trigonal, pyramidal, with a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen and the phosphorus. They're both overall polar, okay, because of this lone pair of electrons. Uh, we do have a negative and a positive end on these molecules. Now, NH3 also has hydrogen bonding, okay? Because of the lone pair of electrons and the hydrogen bonded to the nitrogen, it can form hydrogen bonds, whereas PH3 does not. So in this case, NH3 has a higher boiling point than PH3. Now, finally, uh, I have told you in this video that hydrogen bonds are our strongest, dipole-dipole forces are our next strongest, and London forces are our weakest. Just want to give you a little bit uh, more information in terms of the relative strength of those forces. So London forces are on the scale of about 1 to 10 kilojoules per mole. Dipole-dipole are stronger, around 3 to 25 kilojoules per mole. And hydrogen bonds, as you can see, are at least 10 times greater than London forces at 10 to 40 kilojoules per mole. Uh, so just kind of gives you an idea of the relative strength of those different intermolecular forces. Now in this video, we did a whole bunch of examples with boiling points, but the same arguments would apply to any melting point comparisons that you are making. Uh, the only difference there is change of state, right? Is going from solid to liquid versus boiling points are liquid to gas. That's it then for this video. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.